adventures. The chapel is dedicated to Santa Maria de los Buenos Aires. Saint Mary of the Good Winds was the patron saint of navigators and a favorite of Columbus. This altar painting dates from shortly after Columbus died and features what's considered the first and most accurate portrait of the great explorer on the left. It's also thought to be the first painting of Indians done in Europe. The Virgin's cape seems to protect everyone under it, even the Indians. When I was reading to prepare for this interview, I was quite surprised to see you use the word Aborigines talking about African Americans. You use the word Aborigines talking about African Americans. You use the word Aborigines talking about African Americans. You use the word Aborigines talking about African Americans. You know, uh, race relations issues, things like that. I mean, I have a freedom that a lot of people don't have because of that. Because you use the word Aborigine. Because I've been through the fire. I didn't think it was over, but I didn't think it would come to this. We're not able to get up and just go. We all have transportation. I mean, we live in paycheck to paycheck. I mean, it ain't like we could just able to get up and just leave. I heard there was a secret chord the day that played and it pleased the Lord. But you don't really care for music, do you? Well, it goes like this, the fourth, the fifth, the minor fall and the major lift. The baffled king composing Holly. These weren't the pilgrims. We didn't land on Plymouth Rock. The rock was landed on us. hundred years later. <laughs> the Negro has still languished in the corners of American society and finds himself in exile in his own land. Right on page 24, he say, in any case, at least 3,000 Americans, Native Americans, who are all reclassified as Negroes, are known to have been shipped to Europe between 1493 and 1501, which is during the Columbus expeditions, as we stated earlier. So that became a little bit more clearer on how many actually um, was taken. About 3,000, they were shipped from here. Now you know they told you that the shipping came from Africa to the Americas. But the say. earliest, right? But the earliest um, records of slavery happened from taking, um, taken from the Moors here, and was taken into um, Africa and different parts of Europe. Now, this is another good book called "What They Never Told You in History Class" by Indu Kimmet Kush, and he says the first Americans were black. Yeah, mm -hmm. got it. <laughs> Mm -hmm. And so y'all go and check that out. All right. Matter of fact, he says, he says, Colonel A. Bradgen said that he saw in a collection in Ecuador a statuette of a Negro that is at least 20,000 years old. He added some statues of the Indian gods in Central America possess typical Negro features and certain prehistoric monuments there undoubtedly represents Negroes. This is in the show of Atlantis. So mm. if you were Atlantis was. And who was on Atlantis? Yeah. Mm -hmm. now, repeat, the, repeat that the, again? Yeah. This is called, the book is called The Shadow of Atlantis. Where he made that statement that there was a Negro statuette that was at least dated twenty thousand years old, and he said that yeah. the, um, that the Indian gods in Central America that their gods had typical Negro features. Yeah, and he said it's undoubtedly that all the prehistoric monuments represent Negroes. <laughs> Europeans wrote that, didn't they? Yeah. My own European, uh, my own European brothers and sisters did that to us. Yes, this is this is a colonel, <laughs> Colonel A. Bragin, B R A G H I N E, Bragin. So this is a colonel who fought for them, who died and died when there was blood and sweat and tears and adapt and overcome and conquer and all that good shit. <laughs> <laughs> Wrote the book. Wrote the book. The Shadow of Atlantis. <laughs> and, he just, and he just breaks out and says every damn thing.
everything was Negro, <laughs> and shit, the shit been here at least 20,000 years, niggas. <laughs> <laughs> so think about it. You went past ten thousand years because you know the one on one that says that the flag is ten thousand years old, but then in the one on two that says seventy five thousand years. Well, at least fifty, exactly. Yeah. Exactly. So. Exactly. So. Yeah, this is some deep stuff here. Oh yeah. And, it's, and it keeps going further and further back, don't it? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Deeper and deeper. Yeah. So here, the Empress Verdiasi Terra on uh, Washington Tunica Godstone L Bay, she writes and she states that the Washington are the original inhabitants of what is now named the North, Central, and South Americans. Therefore, the Washington are not Indians. We do not accept the name Af- um, African American, colored, or Indian. We, the people of North America, are predominantly Washington, the ancient mound builders. We were here thousands of years before the amalgamated so-called Indian. The Washington Empire had many descendants, and she said the 12 Shoshone nations, Cherokee, Creek, Chickasaw, Chickasaw, um, 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 Seminole, mm-hmm. um, Choctaw, which is the five civilized tribes. My great-great-grandmother. Mm-hmm. Right, yeah. what it's called, Blackfoot, Tar Hill. Mm-hmm. You know, all of that is part of the um, Choctaw and part of the um, um, Cherokee. Arikara, Sioux, Kiowa, Mohawk, all right, um, Cheyenne, Mandan, the Yamasee, the Arawak, the Lumbee, the Montauk, the Nanakote Moors, as we spoke about, which is the Lenape, the Ben Ishmaelites, the Melungeons. And you can go and check the Melungeons. They just got a new article out in which that just came out in which that states that the Melungeons, they try to give all these fancy conclusions. Oh, well, they're Spaniards, so they're um, Portuguese. They all this. The article says, um, let's just get down to business. This was blacks and um, white women. Um, these was black men and white women, and this, their offsprings. <laughs> in other words, these are Moors already here, and you mix them with Moors. Just stop playing. <laughs> <laughs> that's what a that's what a Melungeon is. This is the family line in which that um several of these presidents come from, like Abraham Lincoln. Like Calvin Coolidge. All right. Like I um um Dwight D. Hot um, um Eisenhower. Uh-huh. Uh-huh. All right. All these individuals came from this Melungeon bloodline. Now you see his mother, well, Eisenhower fella, look like he spit him out. Oh, yeah, oh, yeah, 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 exactly. That's why I show him in the book with his dark-ass features, big lips and everything. I'm like, oh, yeah, you can't hide from this pick right here, nigga. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah. You can't hide from this one. But the Mohegans, the Comanche, um, the Nez Piz, the um, Nanchi, the Pomni, all right, um, the Toscarora, the Washoe, the Catawba, the Micmac, the Osage, the Jenikinson, um, the Matapani, um, um, the Pow- the Powhatan, the Wagamanag, and many, many more tribal nations. All of them, it's Washington. They was all Moors. These are Moors. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. All right, these are Moors. Even though they've been called Native Americans, these are Moors. And how you know, go to a book. It's called The Songs of the Earth. Mm-hmm. All right, these are actually photos of um, Edward Curtis. All right. But in the songs of the earth, check this out now. It says, we, check this out now. This, this is coming from Spokane Gary. All right? Spokane Gary was chief from Washington State, you Spokane <clears throat> Gary. Check out what he says now. We are black. Hold on. God damn. Hold up. <laughs> 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 God damn! I'm sorry, y'all, but <laughs> this is some crucial shit. It is. <laughs> Spokane Gary, all the way in Washington State, back in 1811, who died in 1892. He born in 1811, died in 1892. Now, 
He was a chief of a Native American Indian, so-called Indian tribe. And he comes out and says, yo, we are black. And if we and if we are cut and if we cut ourselves, the blood will be red. And so with the whites, it is the same. Though their skin may be white, I am of another nation. When I speak to you, you do not understand me. When you speak, I do not understand you. Mm-hmm. This is the translation. All right. So even though it says that they're black, you know it's the metaphor. You know what they were saying. They were dark hues. All right. Yeah. So right yeah. there, right, this is from the songs of the earth. This is an actual chief telling you that they were black before the so-called black you know what I'm saying? Thing of the 1960s. Before the yeah. black pride yeah. thing of the 1960s. Right. Happened. So, so he could have used proud. a name. He could have used a name more. And he just edited it out. Bingo. You got it. Right. Like it was exactly. like black was a metaphor. Exactly. 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 And this is what people have to realize. So, another good thing. You have a Harvard professor. Stuff like the Barry Fell, in which that he speaks about the Mi'kmaq of the Northern Algonquin, the family of tribes in which that the Mi'kmaq belong to, and he said that they spoke the language of Liberian, um, um, Libyan, excuse me, a Libyan. Now, where's Libya at? That is next that- to Egypt. Mm-hmm. That's in Africa. Yeah. What the hell is Mac natives doing speaking damn <laughs> African? <laughs> and they, and the crazy thing is that they preserved it over a thousand years. Now this is from See, a Harvard said, this is from a Harvard said, professor who studied language. He said, said Libya. Libya. Right. Is there Libya on this side as well? Of course it is. Mm-hmm. But you know, you look at the exotic yeah. map, so you don't even know what Libya is talking about. It, well, in this particular case, they're claiming African. Yeah. Because this is Africa. Right. This is Northwest Africa. So Northwest regardless Africa. of which one we want to say it, we know that it's something relating to us. That's what we can say. Whether yeah. it's in Libya, there in Africa, if it's Libya here, you know what I'm saying, we're talking about, it's talking about us in some shape, form, or fashion. And this is yeah. coming from a Harvard professor who stated that Micmac, a damn Algonquin tribe, speaks African. <laughs> Libyan, which is actually, when you look at it, it looks like hieroglyphics. It looked like the Mayan language. It looked like the Egyptian language or the hieroglyphics. That's how it looks. Uh-huh. Mm. It, it looks like it, In fact, it is uh, many of this um, of the meanings are identical. Mm-hmm. Magrib or Aksa. Africans oh. and the discovery of America by David Leo Weiner. He writes: When Columbus wanted to address the kings of the West Indies, he sent interpreters who spoke. Hebrew, Arabic, and Chaldean. Mm. What the hell? Mm. West Indian speaking Hebrew, Arabic, and Chaldean, y'all. What's up with that? Who's mm-hmm. going on speaking them languages? Exactly. Because Hebrew, to tell you why that comes from out of um, out of the um, 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 Semitic line, and Arabic comes from the Hamitic line, and Chaldean comes from um, the Semitic Hamitic line from out of Mesopotamia and um, <laughs> all of that was on the other side of the Tigris Euphrates River. And, and it was there amongst the yeah, but they were speaking that shit all the way here in the West Indies. Mm-hmm. That means in the Caribbean. That means in yeah. Puerto Rico. That means in Tobago. That means in Trinidad. That means in Bahamas. That means in Jamaica. That means in Cuba, they spoke what? Hebrew, Arabic, Chaldean. Uh huh. Yeah. That's supposed to be in Arabia, brother. Yeah, brother. 